Welcome to video 7.2 for the UOIT AEDT programs adult learning in a digital context course. In this video, we will examine the items you see before you on the screen. Before we begin, take a few moments, pause the video and consider the following questions. To recap, authentic assessment, the descriptions examined in the 7.1 video, were placed in a word cloud and this is what emerged. Pause and consider the key words. Why and how do these words reflect the notion of authentic assessment? Now, based on what we have addressed thus far, view the next few slides and ask yourself if they reflect authentic assessment and why or why not. In this example, an adult learner was excited to take a creative writing class. The students were given the task to write a story after the instructor gave carefully structured guidelines. The students needed to write a historical fiction story and the story had to have three characters. The students were allowed to pick the location of the story and the era in which the story took place. Does this reflect authentic assessment? Why or why not? Pause and really try to think this through. I will share my perspective now. If we go back to John Mueller's chart, where he makes some key distinctions between traditional assessment with authentic assessment along a continuum, where would the task I just described fit in these areas? Pause and try to figure it out. The writing task would appear to be more performative in nature, so it might fit here. Why did I not place the mark all the way to the end of the continuum? Well, based on this framework, Authentic assessments ask students to demonstrate understanding by performing a more complex task to demonstrate meaningful application. By providing the students with such a structured task and a creative writing task, I personally question whether the task was completely meaningful. It was better than a multiple choice test of elements, but how might we make the task more authentic? Was this a real life or contrived scenario? The students were assigned to write a story after the instructor gave very carefully structured guidelines. The students needed to write a historical fiction, and they had three characters. It might have some real life elements within the task, but was it typically something that they would do in real life? Probably not. The task was somewhat contrived. Okay, I placed a mark here. Why? Mueller suggests that authentic assessments ask students to analyze, synthesize, and apply what they have learned in a substantial manner so that students create new meaning. The students did have to apply their writing skills to complete a task, but was it substantial application? I think it might fit here. Where do you think it might fit? Was it truly student-centered? The students may have had choice, but was it centered on their learning needs? The range of structure in authentic assessments vary uh, depending on the context. In this case, the teacher really structured the task. Is this truly authentic for a creative writing task? Lastly, does this task provide direct evidence of student learning? It is hard to say not knowing the learning objectives, but this task does provide more evidence of their creative writing compared to a test where they needed to select responses. Let's look at this example. A nursing student is being assessed by her supervisor as she takes a blood sugar level during practicum. Does this reflect authentic assessment? Why or why not? Feel free to pause and consider. If we examine Wigan's description, the nursing student is being assessed in a manner that is directly observable. Now hopefully the supervisor has a list of criteria upon which the assessment is based, but the student is applying the knowledge he or she has acquired. Now, would this be the first type of assessment that you give the nursing student on measuring blood sugar levels? I hope not. Why? What type of assessment might precede this particular assessment? Perhaps a more traditional assessment? Perhaps a mock walkthrough? Let's look at this assessment example. On first glance, it may appear to be an example of authentic assessment. Why? Let's recap what Aitken and Pungar found in their synopsis of the literature. 
pause, and review. Before we can determine whether or not this is an example of authentic assessment, we need more information. Upon what is the assessment based? What are the learning objectives? Well, let's set this up. What if the instructor is actually standing behind this student and telling him exactly what pieces of the computer he needs to disassemble? Would it be an authentic assessment? Again, it is hard to say. Why? We don't know what is being measured. What if the learning objective was? Would this be authentic? Yes, as long as the instructor is not telling the student what screwdriver to use and how to use it, it would appear that the assessment is authentic in nature. The student is in a real-world situation solving problems, which screwdriver to use and how to use it and, it, and it is within context. This is authentic as opposed to labeling a variety of screwdrivers on a paper and pencil task. Okay, last example. A student is devising a plan to solve an ill-structured problem. The instructor provided an example of a scenario that she experienced in her previous life as an IT manager. She gave students the opportunity to work in teams to identify potential problems and solutions. The students had opportunities to offer multidimensional and alternative ways to approach the problem. Does this reflect authentic assessment? Why or why not? Take a look at Mueller's continuum. It would appear that this task could fit well within the authentic side. Why? Pause and consider. However, as noted by Paris and Ayers here, and as we have been learning throughout the course, is the assignment in alignment with the learning objectives and instructional experiences? Again, it is hard to say without more information, but assuming that the learning objectives and instruction were in alignment, then yes. This assignment and its corresponding assessment reflect an authentic approach. So, we considered a few examples of authentic assessment. Now think about some of your previous examples as an instructor and or learner at various stages of your academic career. And how and why did the authentic assessments influence your learning? Pause and consider these questions. This is what this video addressed. And our next video will address the next problem assignment. Thanks for watching.